So every student will get one of these sheets and it is a student login sheet and it gives you the directions on how you log in to your Edmentum or Plato account. Those two words are synonymous, Edmentum and Plato. And so I'm going to go through the process. So you will go to ple.platoweb.com and it looks like this. Right, your account number is always WHS35. Your username will be your complete first name and last name as one word. So we're going to log in John Doe. No spaces, no capitals. Your instructor will give you a password. A lot of times we use one, two, three, four. Some instructors like a unique password, so you may be given a unique password. Then you simply click log in and your screen will appear like this. Every, every once in a while when you log in, all of your classes don't populate. So you have to go to the top under All My Work, and that will actually show everything you're working on. So John Doe has two classes he's not started, but if I were John Doe, I would, for example, Algebra, I'd click on All Activities, and that opens up just the Algebra class. And as you see, they're broken into units. Student orientation and uh, syllabus, we don't need to worry about unless you want to read the content of the class. So we go to unit one and we click it. And we go to the first uh, section or first module in unit one, we click it. And it consists of a tutorial, a practice, and a mastery test. So we would first do the tutorial, we would click play, it would open. When we're finished with that, we would go do the, the practice to make sure we know how to do the math problems that it's getting ready to ask us. Now one of the things about your practice is if you miss the question more than twice, you can actually click show answer and it will show you the answer to that problem and it will show you the steps to answer that problem. So this is a great tool that Plato, Plato has. And then you want to do your mastery tests. Some mastery tests, most of them are five questions, but some of the math ones are ten questions. You have to score at least 70% in every test, whether it's a mastery test, post-test, end of semester test, you must get a 70%. So if I try to take my mastery test and I fail, it will lock it. So let's say I take it and I get a 60%. Your mastery test will be locked. I would have to go back and open my tutorial to unlock the mastery test. If I've already gone completely through the tutorial, I don't have to go back through the entire thing. I can simply open it and close it. But if I have not finished my tutorial completely, I have to go back and complete the tutorial before it will give me a second chance on my mastery test. We recommend that you complete all your mastery tests in the unit, passing them, before you attempt the post-test. The post-test is a collection of the questions in your mastery test. So you may or may not have seen it in your mastery test, but in essence, it comes from these units. So take your mastery tests first before you go to your post-test. So let's say we don't want to work any longer on algebra, so we can go up here and click our home or all my work, either one of those. And it will take us back to view our work, so we go to basic skills. Now the reason I put basic skills is this class is set up differently. There are no post-tests in basic skills. So once again, we have orientation, we have the syllabus, but these simply have tutorials and mastery tests. Some units have discussion. Don't worry about the discussions. You do not have to post in discussion, so don't worry about that. You do need to complete the tutorial, and you do need to complete the mastery test with a 70% or better. So there are a few classes, basic skills being one, that do not have post-test. It does, however, have the end of semester test. We have a lot of students ask, can I skip and just take the end of semester test, pass it, and get credit for the class? Here's the answer, no, you cannot. Every single, and you'll see there's bubbles 
on, the, on all this. All these bubbles have to be completely blue or green for you to get credit for this class, except the discussion. So you can't skip ahead. It, it doesn't benefit you at all. I want you also to notice that at the top, uh, not only do you have a home button and an all my work button, but you also have a message button. If you click that, you can actually send a message under new message to your instructor. So when it says to, uh, my name pops up there, Timothy McKenzie, you can click that. You can put the subject, uh, test, reset, and then send me a message. I have to reset, teachers have to reset post-tests and into semester tests. You reset your own mastery test, but you have to, but we have to reset your uh, end of semester and your post-test. And pretty much that, that is everything. The easiest way to get in touch with your instructor is with a new message. So you should be able to click that, and when you click on the to button, their name should populate in there, and once school is started, all the uh, instructors' names will be there. You select your teacher and send them the message. That is the easiest way to get in touch with us. And I think that pretty much sums it up.